Hello guys, welcome to our new video in the stereochemistry series and today I'm going to uh, talk about the conformational analysis of substituted cyclohexane. So I would suggest that you watch till the end. So let's start our today's video. Substituted cyclohexanes uh, could be monosubstituted or they could be multi-substituted. First, we're going to talk about monosubstitution on the cyclohexane ring. So if we have a substituent on this uh, cyclohexane ring, you know that it could be axially oriented or it could be equatorially oriented because you already know that a cyclohexane ring has a 12 hydrogen attached to it and they could be divided into axial and equatorial hydrogens so if you have a substituent x uh, that has replaced one of the hydrogens it could have replaced an axial hydrogen or an equatorial hydrogen meaning that this x could be axially oriented or it could be equatorially oriented and we also know that uh, these chair forms can flip from one form to another just like this right so if we have a mono substituted cyclohexane having x group say it is axially oriented upwards on this carbon atom right now if we flip the ring if this ring flips into this form you already know that all the axial groups become equatorial so this axially oriented x will now be equatorially oriented one thing you have to uh, remember or uh, notice in this uh, flipping of the ring is that this x group was axially oriented and it was projected upwards now when the ring flips and this x now is equatorially oriented it still is projected upwards right so this k means the equilibrium uh, constant between uh, flipping of these rings now what happens is that uh, in a normally uh, unsubstituted cyclohexane the ring flipping is very fast at room temperature it's a very fast process and uh, at room temperature you cannot differentiate between the axial or the equatorial hydrogens but uh, at lower temperatures uh, then you can differentiate through NMR between the axial and equatorial hydrogens but what is the case in substituted cyclohexanes? The percentage of these two conformations depend upon the size of the substituent X, right? Now, what decides which of these substituent is more favorable is the size of the substituent X. A larger X would prefer to be equatorially oriented. Now, if we have a larger substituent here, this ring would prefer preferably be in this form in which x is equatorially oriented now what's the reason the reason is that when this x is axially oriented uh, it comes closer to these two hydrogens which are present at position 3 relative to this carbon atom or position 3 from this side so this x comes closer uh, to these two hydrogens which are axially oriented and uh, it may come uh, within the van der Waal nuclei, nucleus, uh, sorry, van der Waal radius. So when it comes within the van der Waal radius, this x experiences some uh, steric hindrance or interaction because of these axial hydrogens and we call it a 1-3 diaxial interaction. 1, 3 means that this X is at 1, so the hydrogen at 3, which is axially oriented, will feel some interaction because of uh, this X. And similarly, this carbon atom, which is at 3 relative to this carbon, uh, having a hydrogen axially oriented, this hydrogen will feel some interaction from the X, which is axially oriented as well. And that's why we call it 1-3 diaxial interaction. And whenever there is some sort of steric hindrance, it brings instability to the system. So to avoid this 1-3 diaxial interaction, this ring flips. And when it flips, you know that axial groups become 
equatorial and so when the ring flips and this x now is equatorially oriented it is less crowded and it does not feel any one three diaxial interaction so there is no steric hindrance associated with this uh, conformation of this substituted cyclohexane ring because the x group the bulkier group is equatorially oriented but in this case it is axial and it is unstable so <clears throat> it will prefer to be in this form uh, more of the time than this form now you see here different types of substituents and as the bulkiness or the size of this substituent X increases, you see the percentage of it being axially oriented lower or the chances of it being axially oriented lowers and the chances of it being equatorially oriented increases with increase or bulkiness in the increase in the bulkiness or size of this uh, X substituent. So if we have a bulkier group, it will uh, preferably be equatorially oriented than axially oriented. Now these rings could be disubstituted or multi-substituted as well. Now disubstitution means that there are two substituents attached and those two substituents could be at 1, 2 or 1, 3 or 1, 4 relative to each other. So these 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 disubstituted cyclohexane have several possible conformations and depending upon the orientation of these groups, they could be cis or trans uh, to each other. Cis uh, disubstituted uh, disubstitution means that both the groups, uh, both the substituents are oriented or projected on the same side of the ring and trans means that they are on opposite or projected they are they are projected on opposite sides of the ring so we will see that in a moment what cis or trans mean and we will discuss each of these three cases separately so if we have a one two disubstituted cyclohexane ring let's say we have a one two dimethyl cyclohexane now this one two dimethyl cyclohexane could be cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane or it could be trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane so we have an example of the cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane here so you see that both the methyl groups are at position 1 and 2 relative to each other and you can also see their projection which is above this ring in both uh, the methyl groups uh, and another thing you must notice here is that the cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane have one of the methyl groups axially oriented and the other is equatorially oriented so we say that it has an axial equatorial orientation now when this ring flips you know that all the axial groups become equatorial and all the equatorial groups become axial so this axial methyl group now is equatorially oriented and it still is projected upwards just like this one and this equatorial CH3 group now is axially oriented and again as it was projected upwards this axial CH3 is also projected upwards so again we see after flipping of this ring uh, one of the group one of the CH3 is axial the other is equatorial so again we have an axial equatorial orientation for uh, this cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane even after flipping of the ring so if we see or analyze both of them energy wise uh, both will have similar uh, a similar amount of energy because one of the groups is axial and the other is equatorial in both the cases now let's see what a trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane would look like so in a trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane one of the group will be uh, projected above this ring upwards and the other will be projected downwards so in this example you see that one of the ch3 which is axial is projected upwards the other is downwards and both the groups are axial and that is why they are trans to each other you know that axial groups on adjacent carbon atoms have opposite projections or orientation so this is oriented upwards this is oriented downwards or projected downwards right and because both of them are axially oriented we say that it is a diaxial conformation of this trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane so when this ring flips 
uh, both the axial uh, CH3 groups will now be equatorially oriented and uh, when they are equatorially oriented you see their projections they are still on opposite sides this so this is projected slightly upwards this is projected downwards so they are still trans to each other but what happens now is that both the ch3 groups are equatorially oriented so we say that it's a diequatorial orientation of the trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane now if we compare both of them energy wise uh, you see here it's a diaxial orientation this is a diequatorial orientation and you already know that uh, these bulkier groups when they are equatorially oriented that brings stability to the system or the system or the molecule is more stable when the bulkier groups are equatorially oriented so in this case this diequatorial uh, conformation of the trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane will be more stable than the diaxial orientation Let's see how 1,3 di-substituted cyclohexanes would look like. So we have again a cis 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane uh, example. So you see both the CH3 groups are at 1 and 3 relative to each other. And in this case, because it's a cis conformation, so both the CH3 groups are uh, axially oriented. And you know that at 1 and 3 position, the axial uh, groups are on the same side of the ring so this is a diaxial orientation uh, or conformation for the cis 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane when this ring flips both the axial groups will now be equatorially oriented and it's the same case as in the last uh, slide you saw that the trans 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane has a diaxial and diaequatorial orientation so energy wise this diaequatorial orientation of the cis 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane will be more stable as compared to the diaxial orientation or, or conformation so you would uh, think that this cyclohexane or you can say that this cyclohexane this 1,3 uh, cis 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane does not exist in this form but it will exist in a form in which both the CH3 groups are equatorially oriented. Now let's see what's the case in the trans 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane. So at 1 and 3 position the trans groups would be uh, axially and equatorially oriented so this uh, CH3 is projected upwards this is axial this CH3 is projected downwards and it is equatorially oriented so it has an axial equatorial uh, orientation and when the ring flips this CH3 becomes equatorial and this CH3 is now axially oriented so again we have an axial equatorial orientation so the trans 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane has two conformations or you can say it's the same conformation uh, both have axial equatorial uh, orientation and both have uh, similar energies in a 1,4 di-substituted cyclohexane again uh, we have cis and trans conformation so this uh, is an axial CH3 and the other CH3 is at position 4 relative to this one and to be cis this one has to be equatorially oriented because at one four position the axial uh, groups are trans to each other so the second group which should be cis uh, which, which would be cis should also be uh, equatorially oriented so we have an axial equatorial orientation for the cis one four dimethyl cyclohexane in this case and when the ring flips this ch3 becomes equatorial and this CH3, which is equatorial, is now axially oriented. So again, we have an axial equatorial orientation. It's the same, and both have similar energies. And the trans 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane now has uh, axial axial orientation. So it's a diaxial orientation in this case. And when the ring flips, uh, both will be equatorially oriented. So the ring would most probably uh, or prefer to be in this form in which both the CH3 groups are uh, equatorially oriented. So this is more stable as compared to the diaxial uh, conformation. So now you see that the 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexanes have similar sort of conformations uh, as that of 1,4 disubstituted cyclohexane. Both get, could be cis and trans. The cis in both cases is axial equatorial and the trans in both cases are 
diaxial or diequatorial in which the diequatorial is more stable and the molecule uh, exists more most of the time in this form but one three di substituted cyclohexane is different from the two right so this is how you can analyze uh, di substituted and mono substituted uh, cyclohexane i hope it helps uh, we'll see uh, we will discuss some more topics uh, in the upcoming videos stay tuned thank you so much for watching